Les Smith, Ball State University, Muncie, Indiana. Spell your name. Les, L-E-S, Smith, S-M-I-T-H. What's your title? P professor of Landscape Architecture. All right. Freeze up. You're right. <laughs> so we've been FedExing like every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah. I got that impression. There are different maps um, for different purposes. So it's, it's been working through them one by one and getting Frequent the Frequent flyer they, customer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, you ready? Um, just tell me a little bit about what the issue is, what the problem or the concerns are at the Olympics. What's your trying to deal with it as far as the heat? Well, after Barcelona, that was uh, there were demonstrated some pr problems with the sport in terms of uh, heat exhaustion for the horses. There were a couple horses that actually did end up with a little bit of a problem. And it became uh, important for the officials of the sport to really understand what was going on and to see how the, the development of cross-country courses at that level, the Olympic level, could be adjusted to make sure that uh, everything was uh, done to keep the horses from incurring that uh, problem. And so with the course designer and the technical delegates of, the, of this uh, Atlanta Olympics, it was determined that there should be a lot of study so that there was a number of veterinarian research uh, aspects that went on. And on the site itself, there was actually weather stations to record climate and climatic conditions. And then through the computer systems here at Ball State, we also developed some three-dimensional models of the site and began to look at how the slope conditions generated uh, hotter conditions in some aspects versus cooler. So the north slopes versus the south slopes, the north slopes being cooler, the south slopes being hotter. Uh, the time of day and the fact that the, as the sun gets at certain angles in the, uh, the atmosphere, certain terrain and land surfaces heat up more uh, more than the ambient temperature so that it actually gets hotter much like the concept with an asphalt driveway or a parking lot that uh, receives radiation and and begins to re-radiate hotter temperatures than actually the air is itself so you increase the condition of overheating and then we also looked uh, with the computer model at the vegetation cover to make sure that there was we were looking at how to utilize and maximize the cooling effects of shade both right directly over them as well as, as shade in the near vicinity that helps to uh, in, again increase some cooling efforts for the site. And then the, finally the rigor of the course itself, how the, the, the galloping lanes began to use uphill and downhill conditions and to try to adjust those and find the areas of the site that would uh, offer a, an appropriate, difficult competition, but without overtaxing the horse's physical ca characteristics and therefore getting into some overheating problems. Yeah. <laughs> Touch on that one for the yeah. news release. <laughs> That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, also about the wind and the breezes about what you have done to right. deal with natural the, ventilation. Of course, a lot of the investigation and the analysis is best done on the site itself, but we were able to, with the computer model, to do a little additional work at look at how the canopy of the, of the forested areas that, that are on this site, it is a mixture of open meadow and uh, forested ravines, is the nature of this kind of site in east of Georgia in Conyers. And we were able to look at how the uh, the density of the, of the forest might need to be adjusted to allow for convection breezes to develop so that there are, are cases where um, a thick forest is actually warmer and more static in the air quality than something that has a little bit of thinning to it to allow some of the breezes to begin to develop and, and the chimney effect of hot air at the top of the canopy to begin to pull uh, cooler air at the ground up and begin to cause a slight breeze and, and again a cooling and sometimes the cooling is only one degree two degrees but it can actually be uh, as much as if things are if if we site the course as well and use the the natural ventilation and pick the slopes that are not going to heat as quickly then we can get into six seven eight degree temperatures that are cooler than the ambient temperature or the average temper temperature of that particular time of day um tell me about some of the particular features that you've designed into the 
to the site, like the enlisting fans at the end or the veterinary pass. Right. Path. The One of the additions that really are more of like amendments to the site are the cooling aspects that occur where the horses come in on the endurance phase after have, they have completed their warm-up period and their steeplechase jumping, they come in to what they call a 10-minute box where the veterinarians uh, review the conditions, the vital signs of the horse, and they also give the horse and rider an opportunity along with the groom to do a cooling session before they go out on the cross country, and this has been accomplished by a, an enormous uh, greenhouse uh, fabrication where there is a, a an arch structure with shaded uh, a filter paper, filter screen on top to shade it and then hundreds of mister fans, large uh, commercial fans with uh, atomizer jets or misting jets that keep a continuous supply of cool moist air and the horses walk in a circuit through this tunnel of cool uh, dark area and they, uh, f they have found that it really uh, increases the cooling effect of the horse then that is also available and utilized after they come off of the final cross country where, they, where the greatest uh, potential for heat, is, heat exhaustion exists. So that that has been a, a, a really innovation to the sport in the last year, uh, year to year and a half. And they have done some research. Uh, they have tested the, these fans in different settings across the United States and Europe and have found that they really probably are going to become a very standard part of upper level competition in when the climate is hot because it, it's, uh, they increase the cooling uh, so, so much for the horse. They increase the, the comfort of the uh, cool down period for the horse and they make it much safer in terms of the, the overall health and recovery of the horse after a, such an exertion. I'll touch on the veterinary surveillance as well. Yes, uh, there's a new uh, addition in the, this particular Olympics is where, where they're actually prior to the cross country, they're out on a warm up after the ste steeplechase, after they've done the steeplechase portion, they're in their third phase, which is called phase C, which is another trot out. And th this time, they, the horses have been out for an, uh, a good 20 minutes or so, and they've been exerted at the steeplechase. They then go through the phase C, which is a trotting, and they have changed this uh, this year at the Olympics to actually be a circuit where they will come back through a veterinarian, veterinarian uh, surveillance location. They will actually stop for an additional 10 minutes each time. So it actually represents a, um, another major innovation to the sport where they are having an opportunity to check the horse's conditions much earlier in this uh, endurance portion and um, catch anything that might be looking abnormal or not safe for the horse and the health of the horse. Um. Tell me, uh, tell me um, specifically what the Intergraph computers have been able to provide to a project. The, because the Intergraph computer is designed to analyze land by doing the three-dimensional modeling, it's really been a, a tremendous tool from a number of aspects. It, it immediately uh, does do some calculations of the slope orientation and their potential to heat so that that has been used for the microclimate study. Then it also has an engineering component that allows, for, as you choose possible galloping lanes, it quickly generates the profiles of, those, uh, of that land and gives you the, the uphill and downhill gradient to give you some, some sense of the rhythm and exertion of the course in terms of to topographic climbing and descending. Both of those are hard on the, uh, on the horse for different reasons, going downhill does require the horse to balance differently and maybe actually retract a little bit to keep from getting too fast. We experience that as humans running down a hill. And then of course uphill is where there is the, you're fighting against gravity at that time and trying to pull yourself up. So those represent uh, periods of a competition that begin to uh, accelerate the physical exertion of the horse. So those have, to identify that through the engineering component of the Intergraph system is, has been very beneficial. And then as you, you see behind me, the simulation of actual jump sites and seeing how the shade works in those conditions and how, uh, how the actual 
experience of the horse and rider going through the cross-country course itself, then the Intergraph computer system is, also allows you to get a, a fairly realistically, f fairly realistic feeling of that component of the course. Um, is, are the concerns that you're dealing with at the Olympics fairly unique, or there are they things that the that the sport has been dealing with? The the sport has been diligent all along in terms of maintaining the understanding that the horse uh, is an athlete that has uh, has to be protected, and it's it's it is pushing. It, it is a sport that pushes just like any other sport does. The athlete, which in this case is both a horse and a rider, because the the riders are extremely confident athletes in order to maintain the kind of uh, rigor and discipline of getting to a competition like that, uh, the rider is not without being identified as an, as an extremely uh, diligent and, and talented athlete. But in this case, the, the horse, of course, becomes a concern because there are certain choices that we are making on their behalf. And so, uh, as especially with Barcelona uh, and some of the heat problems there, I believe that this this uh, more rigorous type of study is is something that's fairly new to the sport, and the, I think we're just beginning to see the possibilities of integrating the computer capabilities to study sites that are being de developed for international level competitions, and that uh, that we'll probably see some of these techniques being applied in future Olympics, Pan American Games, World Championship sorts of competitions. As especially if the place chosen is one that has some potential for overheating with the animals. I can think of one other. One more question. One question. Sure. Okay. I, I, I ask. Oh, okay. How can you use this uh, work you're doing here in the computers and the research in your in the classroom? Okay. The one way that we've been able to really see some connection is that the this intergraph modeling technique has given us the opportunity to to start to think about how you study a site or a location with regard to the comfort, especially heat comfort and breezes and basic um, a pleasant experience as it relates to a park setting, an urban space. And so we're, we're beginning to see how this becomes a very important tool in the classroom where students are beginning to look maybe not so specialized at a horse facility and a horse course, but at more general projects that they're involved in as landscape architecture, students in terms of a park, uh, how it can uh, be, how we can site an amphitheater for day use so that we'll be in a cooler portion and, and will allow for the comfort of the, of the, the users, uh, an urban park setting where a small urban space is chosen with the proper consideration towards the overheating potential of buildings associated next to it. and. Uh, the conditions of the, so, the sun angles coming at it. So there really are some wonderful opportunities to begin to see how the, the student projects can utilize this computer application in the analysis and the better design and preparing them as professionals to go out and make better decisions on behalf of the public, especially with public spaces. For people instead right. of mm -hmm. horses. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think that's great. No, that pretty much. All the, all the credits, you know, that shows in. I'm shooting his hand. <laughs> a lot of a lot of detail. Could the uh, competitors get a, an advantage by having what you have on a computer? 
Yeah, in the end, though, it's, it's so site specific. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you could really get the. But I mean, the Olympics for this on this site. Right. That, you know, it's, it's interesting to consider that maybe a CD ROM is made available in the future to competitors that are coming. That would be something, right? Preview the course. <laughs> Change the position here a little bit. Come in closer. Has the rendering capacity. To go ahead and Yes, thank you yes. very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate Wait, it. Wait, got work to do? <laughs> Are the... Uh, So about between those, we've had a decent variety of good feel that one of the kind of interesting things that they want to actually put on the side or on a computer model or on, or we had to keep on the storage and on the horse too, right? If they wanted to 